Uh, it's very exciting to be here as someone who's interested in so many different facets of education. The various lenses that people take in the audience and on this panel are, are truly fascinating and complimentary. My personal choice in, in my academic pursuits has been around pedagogy as an umbrella. Uh, I've been very lucky to work with Dr. Morby for, since the inception, since, since application, and she's brought me on to look at technology specifically, the role of technology in the shifting landscape of pedagogy. And what I see that shift as is towards learning scapes as opposed to landscapes. These educational environments that used to exist in isolation are now systems that technology is supporting. These connections between individuals and between specific communities and creating larger communities. Now, we've all heard about the problems of technology in creating isolation and with amongst other things. Uh, if you're a parent, I'm sure there's many other <laughs> reasons why we have a negative views on technology. My interest was to disprove this myth that technologies created individualism and that we could use technology to in fact cultivate community and bring it back to, to a shared experience. So with Dr. Morby, we, we look at social media and the role of social media in a Canadian undergraduate classroom in creating some pedagogical shifts and what came out of, what has come out of that research, some trends that have come out are really the importance of clarity of expectation from a teaching and learning standpoint that we as teachers often assume some things around technology and, and learners in a Canadian undergraduate context which is not, are not necessarily true. So those assumptions need to be met with clarity for our students. Another trend that comes out is about diversity. And this often speaks to our comfort level as, as educators. Students want us to use text. They want us to use video. They want us to use image. They want us to expect that they use a diverse set of tools. And if we rely too much on a, a one, one social media, we have to look at the limitations within that to provide multimodal expressions. And then we've been able to work with cultural education with the Uganda National Museum in Uganda and the role of building a participatory architecture through social media. Yes, it's available, it's, it's available not on a smartphone, but on the chocolate bar phones that are more readily available in many places around the world. And you can incite engagement in communities that have regularly been disengaged from their own cultural heritage, which is a very interesting look at, at teaching through social media in that context. And working on an article with Jen looking at hybridity in, in Algonquin College specifically, but how teachers are feeling about using technology in their classrooms. One of the really unique contributions to the literature that came out of her research is about people are still really confused. Right? Like we say, the sh I say shifting landscapes, pedagogy becoming these learning scapes, using technology. Blended learning, hybrid learning, this is now the you know, best of both worlds. There are a lot of teachers actively teaching that are confused about what this actually means, blended learning. And that alone is, is a very important takeaway for us here today to think about uh, teacher education. And then the other one, really interesting, spoiler alert, is about uh, time. So, you know, we all say technology can save us time. But in, in actuality, when we look at how we implement technology, it creates often more time to design the course, more time in feedback, trying to, I mean, if you've ever tried to assess an online discussion forum, we know how long this can actually take sometimes to pull, to pull things out of those forums. And, and looking at value-based time. So teachers as indiv are individuals, and they value different things differently. So if we can tap into what teachers value, we can look at how to support what they need and do through technology. And lastly, my own research is looking at a wealth of data, courtesy of Dr. Austin and his team, that was collected here at York University around student perceptions in courses. Now, my, when I look at pedagogy, I've chosen a theoretical framework under which to look at that, and it's called the Communities of Inquiry. So there's three elements to pedagogy. One is a social presence, so how students feel their identity is projected in the learning environment, how they feel they're able to create social ties. As we know, it's very important in community, right? 
Two, cognitive presence. So how disorganized is the content? How easily is it navigatable? <laughs> That's definitely a word. And, and so is it signposted? Right? How the, we put material online, but we are asking students to, to have a cognitive course or pathway through that, which is not necessarily thought of as, as at the instructional design phase. And lastly, teacher presence, which is really fascinating. When you look at the changing level of pedagogy online, what, what promotes learning? How we can mediate discussions more effectively? How we can ask questions more effectively through these online forums to incite co-created learning? Because we all say these are things we want, but they're actually practical things that we can do, which ultimately my goal after the dissertation is complete and we look at kind of the effect of these presences on achievement, which is really exciting that we have that data. Mm -hmm. Thank you, perfect, last sum up, is the impact on teacher training programs. I'm gonna look at Chloe. I taught the teaching and learning with digital technologies this year course uh, this, this, this last semester. And I would really love to continue being a part of teacher education and particularly pre-service teacher education courses because time and time again we're getting we're getting research that shows the unpreparedness of teachers and as the research I've been able to do with the lovely staff members in this room, there are some practical strategies. So yes, the landscape is shifting to a learning scape. It is a system, it can be intimidating, but let's break it down to its elements and go from there.